So after supplementing with nicotinamide mononucleotides, up to 1,000 milligrams per day, I take a little bit less now, around 700 milligrams per day, my sleep quality, yeah, on par with megadosing melatonin, even though I didn't wake up um, clinically depressed on uh, copious amounts of NMN, even though it's substantially more expensive. So my wallet is depressed, but my body is not. Vigor Steve here, you guys asked for it. So here we are, we're going to do a four-parter on how to optimize your sleep, your deep sleep, deep dive video series. Four parts, the first part, this video is going to be how to optimize your sleep using various over-the-counter supplements, either separately or in combination. Then part two, we're going to discuss medications and drugs, which could potentially help you improve your sleep quality or at least make you fall asleep faster. Then part three is going to be about accessories or products to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, improve your sleep quality, and improve your overall restfulness throughout the night. And then part four is going to be about best practices for everything, including the supplements, the medications, and perhaps accessories or products. Put everything together, giving you the most optimized, the most restful, the most recovering, the deepest sleep known to man, making you wake up feeling super refreshed, an entire new human being, ready to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and somehow, some way, the bubble gum is included. That's all included in this video. But before we do, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to support the channel by joining the YouTube or Patreon memberships. You can vote for upcoming deep dives. You can join the Vigorous Q&A, which is always on Saturday, or just to support the channel so I can reinvest into new microphones and new cameras and uh, maybe hire more editors so I can produce even more content for you guys. Have a look at my sponsors and affiliates. Some of the products which we'll discuss in this YouTube video, you can find the direct link down below in the YouTube description section and otherwise in the comment section. Now, we're just going to discuss supplements, over-the-counter supplements in this video. All of the recommended dosages are for taking these supplements separately. I've taken most of these supplements at one point or another in my life. Some of them worked, some of them didn't, even when uh, mega dosing at much higher dosages than what is generally recommended. So we're going to classify them based on my personal experience with these particular over-the-counter supplements, ranking them from best to worst, basically least effective. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't get any beneficial effects out of these supplements. Everybody's different, obviously. So feel free to experiment and uh, start ramping up the dosages of various extracts or other supplements which are known to improve sleep quality or shorten the onset of sleep and prolong the duration of sleep, right? It's entirely up to you. But from my personal experience, you know, being with Gorilla Mind and having access to their Gorilla Dream formula, that's this one, which contains several of the ingredients which we're going to discuss in this video. Take the thinking out of it. Two, four, six capsules of Gorilla Dream um, puts me asleep and sends me right off to La La Land. And all I need to do, depending on how deep I want to sleep, maybe add in a little bit of glycine or 5-HTP, which you shouldn't take if you're taking antidepressants like SSRIs or MAU inhibitors, right? So we'll discuss that when we get to the 5-HTP section of this video. But for my personal preference, Gorilla Dream, add a little bit of glycine and 5-HTP, and I'm knocked the f out. All right, let's start with melatonin, the greatest of all time, the absolute goat of all sleep supplements, the best there is. You can take dosages between one, one milligram to 10 milligrams, and some guys go even as high as 100 milligrams melatonin before bed, even though that's certainly not for everybody. Taking 30 milligrams melatonin before bed myself after slowly ramping up the dosages, um, yeah, that kind of made me clinically depressed. So give that video a watch. It's called Megadosing Melatonin No Bueno. And I'll link it at the end of this one. So before you make a dose melatonin, please watch that so you know exactly what can go wrong. In particular cases, um, the effective dosages of melatonin, whether that's sublingual instant release or slow release, range between one, one milligram to let's say 10 milligram. And again, at higher dosages, you might still wake up drowsy. So start low and build your way up. Personally, I found that a low dose, let's say three milligrams of sublingual melatonin, I believe that Gorilla Mite also has one of these products. I'll link it down below. And so if you really want to fall asleep fast, um, sublingual melatonin is basically the way to go. That's the shortest onset of sleep out of all of the supplements in this video. And then if you want to keep yourself asleep, a long release or a slow release melatonin formula, let's say three to six milligram, 
will help keep you asleep the entire night through. Now, again, that might mean three milligrams instant release and six milligrams slow release for a total of nine milligrams, which is towards the end of what is generally considered to be tolerable. You might still wake up drowsy and it's nothing a cup of coffee can't fix. But, you know, if you're taking uh, uppers during the day <laughs> in a form of coffee or Gorilla Mind uh, Respawn or Gorilla Mind Energy Drink and then take your downers at the end of the day, right? That's a melatonin or Gorilla Dream. Um, you might want to find a nice balance by um, reducing the dose of all uh, uppers and downers in the form of these over-the-counter supplements, right? And don't get me wrong, guys, I'm not trying to compare these supplements to taking Adderall in the morning, which lasts throughout the day, and then taking Diazepam, Valium before bed just to fall asleep. Those are real uppers and downers, but I'm just going with figurative speech here. Um, that's probably the best analogy I can make. And again, I'm a bit of a meathead and a professional drug user, so my sincere apologies if it comes across wrong. All right, melatonin is a hormone which is released by the pineal gland in the response to darkness. So it normally helps with the normal circadian rhythm for people like me who wake up at 12 and go to bed at 4 so they can work a little bit more efficiently at night. Melatonin is a godsend because it can help you fall asleep even though it's already been dark for a multitude of hours. Now sitting here in the studio with a light, a light, a light, another light and a multitude of lights shining in my face, right? If I sit here until 3 o'clock in the morning and I want to fall asleep within one hour, then supplemental melatonin is still the greatest of all time. So melatonin can help you improve sleep quality, uh, particularly in individuals who work night shifts or um, you know people who have struggle falling asleep or staying asleep, like I mentioned before, instant release melatonin in combination with slow release melatonin and perhaps some of the supplements which we'll discuss a little bit later on. Uh, melatonin is a very potent antioxidant, including all of its metabolites, also highly potent antioxidants. And there's a lot of scientific evidence that shows that melatonin can improve fertility parameters, protect your kidneys and liver from oxidative stress induced by anabolic androgenic steroids and perhaps other performance enhancing drugs. So melatonin is basically a no-brainer. You can stop this video right now if you um, are already satisfied with my advice, because I, everything that falls after melatonin um, yeah, it's going to be not as effective, I would say. Still, there's a lot more supplements that we can discuss. So let's move over to gamma amino butyric acid, GABA. Dosages range between 250 to 1,000 milligrams before bed. Some people go as high as 3,000 milligrams GABA before bed. I don't think that's really necessary. If you uh, follow other practices to improve your circadian rhythm and, uh, you know, don't take too many stimulants before bed, obviously. So 1,000 milligrams GABA before bed, I find to be effective. But if you're currently on HRT, including DHEA and pregnenolone, which are known to allosterically modulate the GABA type A receptors, these supplements can make you more sensitive to GABA supplementation. So if you're on, let's say, 25 to 50 milligrams DHEA and 10 to 25 milligrams pregnenolone, whatever works best for you, if you're on these supplements, you can start towards the low end of GABA supplementation let's say 250 milligrams or 500 milligrams, that should be sufficient to help you fall asleep reasonably fast. Now, of course, GABA is a neurotransmitter that helps you relax and reduce anxiety. So especially towards the tail end of the day, if you're still working quite a bit um, and you're you know, a little bit uh, supercharged from doing all of this work, a combination of melatonin and GABA can help you relax, reduce the onset of sleep, keep you asleep for longer, but even taking GABA supplementation just by itself can really improve overall sleep quality. Just keep in mind that GABA supplementation, just like melatonin supplementation, at higher dosages can make you drowsy after you wake up the next day. So when you supplement with, say, let's say, 10 milligrams melatonin and 3,000 milligrams GABA, yeah, you'll be a pretty groggy the next day. Um, I would only do that if you're traveling abroad to opposite time zones. Maybe when you fly that long, 12, 16, 18 hours, you take your megadose melatonin and megadose GABA, you sleep the entire way through, and then you wake up in a new time zone, hopefully um, to a new circadian rhythm. That will work, but don't do it chronically. And I know you guys are going to ask me right now in the comment section, but Steve, what about Phenibut? Well, Phenibut is now classified as a drug and medication, so that will be in part two, right? Stay tuned, subscribe now if you're not subscribed yet so we can figure out about Phenibut, hopefully dropping next week. Moving over to vitamin B6 P5P, which stands for peroxidal 5 phosphate, 25 to 50 milligrams before bed. I'm sure many of you guys are familiar that vitamin B6 P5P can help 
help to increase dopamine levels and reduce prolactin levels downstream. Those dosages range between 200 milligrams to 300 milligrams per day, but to improve sleep quality, even in B6, B5, B, a low dose of 25 to 50 milligrams before bed is more than sufficient because uh, the P5P variety of B6 helps to produce serotonin, which ultimately produces or contributes to melatonin production downstream. So let's say you take a combination of 5-HTP with vitamin B6, P5P. The 5-HTP will be the building block for serotonin, and the P5P will help to produce serotonin and melatonin downstream. So you get this sedating, relaxing, and anxiolytic effect by combining 5-HTP with um, B6, P5P, so many fives and so many sixes. <laughs> so um, this combination will um, produce serotonin, serotonin in the beginning, and then that gets converted into melatonin, helping you to stay asleep. You can find this combination of vitamin B6, P5P, and a lot of over-the-counter supplement stacks. I think it's highly beneficial. Um, if you want to experiment with this by yourself, feel free to go ahead. You might even increase dopamine levels if you're supplementing a little bit more royally, let's say 200 milligrams per day. Of course, you know, P5P is associated with a multitude of conditions when you supplement it at higher dosages for longer periods of time. So don't do that. I would rather stick towards the low end of P5P supplementation because again, vitamin B6 is found in many food sources and ultimately your body will synthesize adequate or decent amounts of the peroxidal 5 phosphate variant of B6 coming from your food sources, right? So don't overdo it. A low dose goes a very long way if you combine that with things like 5-HTP or L-tryptophan. And it's also important to note that vitamin B6, P5P, just like most of the B vitamins, can help to regulate homocysteine levels. Now, homocysteine, when it's chronically elevated, can actually induce insomnia by keeping you awake the entire night through or exacerbate or even induce sleep apnea. Now, it's a little bit positively correlated because if you have chronic insomnia, or sleep apnea, uh, homocysteine levels can certainly increase just because of that effect, because you're now chronically inflamed. So if you're chronically inflamed, um, you can see that from your homocysteine levels and your high sensitivity C-reactive protein levels. And supplementing with vitamin B6, P5P, let's say 50 to 100 milligrams if homocysteine is really that high, and a general B100 complex, which contains all of the B vitamins in either 100 milligrams or 100 micrograms, then homocysteine levels over time will certainly come down and then your insomnia or sleep apnea hopefully will resolve itself or at least improve to a certain extent, right? And otherwise, there's always a sleep study to get your sleep apnea diagnosed and a CPAP or an APAP prescribed. But we'll save that for part three of this deep dive video series. Moving over to 5-HTP, which stands for 5-hydroxytryptophan. Again, those just range between 50 to up to 300 milligrams before bed. But from my personal experience, I feel that 100 milligrams 5-HTP is more than enough. And again, I can't emphasize this enough. Don't take 5-HTP or L-tryptophan for that matter in combination with SSRIs because that can contribute to serotonin syndrome. So when I took fluvoxamine in the past, I didn't supplement with 5-HTP. I did supplement with L-tryptophan up to 3,000 milligrams per day, but I found it wasn't really necessary because I got a decent amount of serotonin in my synapses due to the fluvoxamine, uh, which was titrating upwards from 25 milligrams up to 100 milligrams per day, which I've now discontinued at the end of last year. Um, I found at the doses of 25 milligrams to 50 milligrams fluvoxamine per day that L-tryptophan was beneficial. But after that, I started feeling a little bit weird, so I took that out. So if you're currently not on SSRIs on Mayo inhibitors, then you can look into 5-HTP and L-tryptophan. It kind of depends on what you prefer. I prefer 5-HTP at a lower dose of, let's say, 100 milligrams before bed to increase serotonin production and melatonin secretion downstream and otherwise maybe dosages of 500 up to a thousand milligrams l-tryptophan before bed if you feel that that's more beneficial to help um, produce serotonin and again melatonin downstream right serotonin and melatonin will help you fall asleep and stay asleep promote relaxation improve sleep quality etc we already mentioned that a little bit earlier in this video now Something what a lot of people don't realize, but what I mentioned in the mitochondrial support stack, if you haven't watched it, you should. I'll link it at the end of this one. The nicotinamide mononucleotide, NMN, and nicotinamide riboside, NR, doses ranging from 300 milligrams up to 1,000 milligrams over the day, can improve your nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide 
plus levels, including NADP and NADPH, all of these help with the enzymatic reactions by acting as an electron donor in all of the enzymatic reactions within the body. So you want to convert one thing into the next, NAD+, NADP, or NADPH. And you need supplemental NMN or NR to raise NAD plus levels and NADP and NADPH levels in the body systemically. So after supplementing with nicotinamide mononucleotides, up to 1,000 milligrams per day, I take a little bit less now, around 700 milligrams per day, my sleep quality, yeah, on par with megadosing melatonin, even though I didn't wake up um, clinically depressed on uh, copious amounts of NMN, even though it's substantially more expensive. So my wallet is depressed, but my body is not. So if you have to make a head-on-head -head comparison with an effective dose of melatonin versus an effective dose of nicotinamide mononucleotides, and it's a very hard comparison because both of them are highly beneficial, and ideally you take both, right, for its antioxidant benefits and its sleep quality improving benefits versus its um, overall um, anti-aging and well-being benefits right of the nicotinamide mononucleotides personally if i have to choose i would go with nicotinamide mononucleotide because i feel more rejuvenated and i feel that my sleep quality is better than a higher dose of melatonin i don't wake up groggy i wake up feeling energetic but again a combination of let's say 500 milligrams nmn and uh, three maybe six milligrams melatonin, um, that's pretty much heaven <laughs> when it comes to sleep quality. Again, watch that mitochondrial support stack. It will change your life if you have the financial means to follow through with it. And again, we'll save the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide plus intravenous administrations for the medication and drug video, which is going to be part two, right? That's an IV administration. That's not really an over-the-counter supplement. Moving on to magnesium, you can choose by yourself which form has the highest absorbability, the highest bioavailability, whether that's glycinate, bisglycinate, citrate, or another form that's entirely up to you. The best form you, of magnesium you can get, 200 to 400 milligrams before bed, because magnesium helps with relaxation and also helps to regulate cortisol levels, especially at night. Now, normally, cortisol levels kind of peak in the morning and then somewhere in the afternoon, let's say around four o'clock, based on a normal circadian rhythm. But again, if you sleep outside of your uh, circadian rhythm and your cortisol levels might are coming up when you're actually going to bed, like is what happening in my case, right? I go to bed at 4 a.m. Then magnesium is very beneficial because this keeps this cortisol suppressed. And now you can actually sleep a lot better. Now, those just range, again, 200 to 400 milligrams. Personally, I take 200 milligrams of magnesium bisglycinate with each meal. I don't notice that my cortisol levels are chronically suppressed due to this um, extensive supplementation of magnesium. Um, but the relaxation is certainly there. Now, I'm not relaxed during the day to the point I can't function during work, um, but I do notice that with my last magnesium supplement at the end of the day, which is just 200 milligrams, um, my relaxation and overall um, ability to fall asleep is certainly improved. Now, you can say the same thing for zinc supplementation, zinc glycinate, bisglycinate, citrate, or picolinate, 15 to 30 milligrams before bed in combination with magnesium, up to 400 milligrams. Both of these are known to kind of regulate and reduce your cortisol secretion. Again, assuming you're sleeping through your circadian rhythm. Both zinc and magnesium contribute to melatonin production, so that helps you fall asleep and stay asleep throughout the night. I believe that, what was it? Magnesium contributes to 200 or 300 essential biological bodily functions, and zinc contributes to a couple hundred as well, including um, immune system health, Wound healing, DNA synthesis, testosterone production acting as a aromatized inhibitor to a certain extent, or at least keep serum estradiol levels in range, so at least you don't wake up with a moon face if you're supplementing with testosterone replacement or full hormone replacement therapy. Right? Zinc and magnesium, pretty much essential, especially magnesium in the context of muscular contractions. Calcium helps to contract your muscles, and magnesium helps to relax your muscles, just like magnesium helps you relax at the end of the day to improve your overall sleep quality. And just keep in mind, guys, that higher dosages of magnesium can cause diarrhea or gastrointestinal upset. So start low, maybe 100 milligrams or even 50 milligrams magnesium citrate or some of the other forms with meals. And again, if you take a high dose at the end of the day, let's say 200 to 400 milligrams magnesium citrate or glycinate or bisglycinate, you might get diarrhea the next day. Now, this isn't the end of the world when you're currently in the off season and you're eating a boatload of foods and you're kind of full at the end of the day. So 
you know, mega dosing magnesium at the end of the day might help with evacuation in the bathroom the next day, just like Sinat keeps a little bit of uh, fluid within the intestinal tract. So a combination of Sinat and a little bit of psyllium husk fiber and a pretty strong, potent and high dose of magnesium. Um, yeah, well, you get the gist of it, right? You know that the next day you're going to be emptied out completely. So um, experiment with low doses, just build your way up. Don't overdo it from the start because again, explosive diarrhea might occur. And it's also important to keep uh, in mind that higher dosages of zinc can interfere with the absorption of other essential trace minerals like copper, for example. So if you mega dose your zinc, but you don't supplement with copper, or you don't get that in the form of a multivitamin or you're injecting copper through GHK copper, for example, um, yeah, you might want to supplement a little bit of copper in so you don't get copper deficient. And now your serum iron levels go sky high because that um, is a downstream effect of being copper deficient. So again, keep everything in check. Don't overdo it. Um, a low dose of zinc and magnesium goes a very long way. Now, besides that, there's a couple of amino acids you can look into, including glycine, 500 to 1500 milligrams before bed. I found that that's highly beneficial to improve uh, sedation and relaxation. Glycine is a non-essential amino acid that plays a role in the production of neurotransmitters like serotonin, which again, pro promotes sleep quality downstream. And it's also important to note that both glycine and glutamate, especially in combination, will activate the NMDA receptors, which have a multitude of different purposes. It can improve cognition and memory formation. It is known to induce sleep, especially when glycine and glutamate levels are quite high, might even improve the quality of deep sleep or sleep overall. And it's also known that both glycine and glutamate can heighten your libido through the NMDA receptors, which I mentioned in the libido stack video. I'll link it at the end of this one in case you haven't seen it yet. The glutamate is found in a lot of food sources that we generally eat for overall bodybuilding and fitness aspirations. Nuts and seeds, fruits and vegetables, animal meat sources all contain a decent amount of glutamate. You don't need to start supplementing with monosodium glutamate just to get your glutamate levels up, right? A good diet will get your glutamate levels quite high. And if you supplement with glycine, you get plenty of NNDA receptor stimulation to improve your sleep quality, but your libido will be sufficiently heightened as well. So you get the dirty done and then you fall asleep. I mean, what more do you want as a man and probably as well as a woman? Keep in mind that higher doses of glycine can make you drowsy. So this is basically the side effect that we're after. Most people would supplement with about 250 to 500 milligrams glycine. But if you supplement up to 1500 milligrams glycine before bed, which is where I found to be the sweet spot is at, uh, especially in combination with, again, Grill of my dream. You get your nookie in, you get your Z's in. It's like a perfect night. And all you have to take is a couple over-the-counter supplements. All right, we have L-theanine, let's say 100 to 500 milligrams before bed. L-theanine is naturally found in tea leaves. Um, it's known to have a calming effect. It might improve sleep quality if you take it before bedtime. It can promote relaxation and reduce anxiety to a certain extent. But from my personal experience, I found that L-theanine supplementation is basically a budget, a less effective form of glycine. Still, the evidence is there. Um, it might increase dopamine levels and serotonin levels as well. And that's why you can generally find L-theanine in most of the nootropics or cognitive boosting supplements that are out there, including Gorilla Mind Respawn and Gorilla Mind Energy Drinks, right? I think I'm on, what is it? 75 milligrams L-theanine right now, and I'm not exactly sedated or relaxed. I'm very productive. My dopamine levels must be sky high, but it could also be the copious amounts of L-tyrosine that I'm running at the moment. Okay, so it's something you can look into. I've run it separately, but I found a glycine to be a lot more effective than L-theanine. Next on the list, ways to reduce your overall cortisol levels besides taking magnesium and zinc. Ashwagandha root extract, specifically the KSM66 version, which seems to be the most studied. Now, dosages range anywhere between 150 to 450 milligrams before bed. I found that 300 milligrams ashwagandha root extract is more than sufficient to reduce my cortisol levels, especially when you sleep outside of your circadian rhythm. So again, when you go to bed late at night, let's say three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, uh, a low dose of 300 milligrams ashwagandha root extract, let's say at three o'clock in the morning, suppresses cortisol, allows you to fall asleep. There's some scientific evidence that ashwagandha root extract can increase GABA and serotonin levels. Of course, there's evidence that it can increase testosterone levels. So if you're currently not on TRT or anything above that, like super physiological testosterone levels, um, and including HCG monotherapy, then ashwagandha root extract 
can be highly beneficial to raise your testosterone levels. Just keep in mind that there are some rare instances of documented adidonia and liver damage due to ashwagandha root extract supplementation. So keep that in mind, do your due diligence researching about these known side effects that might occur in 1% or 0.5% of the cases. They can happen, so be aware of them. Still, I found that ashwagandha root extract really shines when you sleep outside of your circadian rhythm when it comes to improved sleep quality, just like phosphodiesterol serine coming from sunflower lecithin, not from soy, right? You don't want any soy in your body with complementary phytoestrogens. If you want to supplement with phosphodiesterol serine, go with the sunflower lecithin form, which might also improve your overall semen volume, right? So that's a added bonus benefit of going with the sunflower lecithin form. Phosphatidyl serine, just like ashwagandha root extract, is known to reduce cortisol levels and promote relaxation if you take it before bed. Dosages range between 200 to 600 milligrams. Personally, I found that a lower dose of ashwagandha root extract with a higher dose of phosphatidyl serine seems to be the most beneficial to reduce cortisol levels and improve overall sleep quality. So let's say 300 milligrams ashwagandha root extract and 600 milligrams phosphatidyl serine. Maybe that's because I work too much. Maybe that's because I train too hard. Maybe it's because I'm chronically stressed, which, well, honestly, no, my stress levels are quite low. Um, if anything, I have self-imposed stress, but that's quite manageable, especially using these supplements. Now, phosphatidylserine are found in high concentrations in the brain, and there it's involved in a variety of functions, including cell membrane, fluidity, neurotransmitter release, and cellular signaling. So it's a no-brainer if you think about or care about your cognition, to supplement with a little bit of phosphatidylserine here and there, ideally before bed, right, to help you fall asleep. Now, there's a lot of extracts besides the ashwagandha root extract that we can discuss. I've tried all of these in various dosages. Some of them worked a little bit. Some of them didn't really work even when I mega dosed it, you know, twice the recommended dose or maybe even three times. And all of these are said to improve overall sleep quality by promoting relaxation or reducing anxiety or increasing levels of GABA in the brain, which again, helps with sedation and the onset of sleep. So all of these function to similar extents, and some of them contain a decent amount of antioxidants in the form of flavonoids, which helps with uh, reactive oxygen species and overall organ health downstream. So there's a reason to try and experiment with all of them in various dosages, but from my personal experience, again, glycine, melatonin, 5-HTP, vitamin B6, P5P, those are your go-tos, and these extracts are just a cherry on top, which is a perfect segue to cherry tart extract, 400 to 900 milligrams before bed, or cherry tart juice concentrate, 250 to 500 milliliters before bed. And the reason why cherry tart or sour cherry is so beneficial to improve overall sleep quality is because it contains melatonin, you dummy, high concentrations of it. So you take the extract, you get a lot of melatonin. Or you take the juice concentrate, you get a lot of mel melatonin. So you can sleep faster, the duration of sleep is longer, you can mitigate some of the insomnia. Just keep in mind that excessive amounts of uh, cherry juice or supplements can lead to gastrointestinal issues and might even interact with blood thinning medications. So if, you're, if you can't get melatonin for whatever reason, there must be a country out there which prohibits the importation or the selling of supplemental melatonin. If you live in one of those uh, sleep phobic countries, just like there are steroid phobic countries, probably the same country, and probably Sweden or Australia, that prohibit the sale of supplemental melatonin. Then you can always go with cherry tart extract or juice concentrate to get your melatonin fix in. Just don't overdo it because otherwise, well, your butthole is going to be miserable. And then there's also ginkgo biloba, 120 to 240 milligrams before bed, um, which is also said to improve sleep quality. But just like L-theanine, uh, ginkgo biloba is usually found in nootropic or uh, cognitive boosting supplements like Gorilla Mind Respawn or Gorilla Mind Energy Drink. And uh, that's what I'm running right now. That's why I'm so highly cognitive. So I would look into ginkgo biloba as it's, um, for its nootropic effects and not for its sleep-inducing effects. But maybe when the L-tyrosine and the caffeine and all of these dopaminergic agents wear off, Maybe then the ginkgo biloba and L-theanine can actually help you fall asleep and um, kind of take the edge off of being so highly productive for the previous four to six hours. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. If I forgot a particular over-the-counter supplement that you really enjoy that really helps you improve your overall sleep quality, 
let me know down below in the comment section. I would like to know, maybe I can include it in the best practices video. Again, if I overlooked it, don't mention ZMA. That contains zinc, mono, methionine acetate, magnesium, and vitamin B6, P5P. And I think, if I remember correctly, if the Alzheimer is not kicking me in the butt right now, I think I covered in this video vitamin B6, P5P, and magnesium and zinc. All right, so don't mention ZMA in the comment section. All right, if I forgot something, let me us know down below. For now, these are the over-the-counter supplements which work to a certain extent to improve your sleep quality. I hope it was helpful. Hope you can get the job done um, by sleeping eight to nine hours and be super anabolic. Oh, and if for whatever reason you're able to kick your Zolpidem or Diazepam or Alprazolam habit after watching this video, you're switching from Ambien, Xanax or Valium to over-the-counter supplements to help you improve your sleep quality and stay asleep and help with relaxation and recovery throughout the night, waking up super refreshed and not groggy, um, you know, thinking about dosing again later in the day. Um, let us know down below in the comment section because Ambien, Valium and Xanax are not really sustainable and deleterious for your health. We'll still discuss them in part two of this sleep deep dive video series. So stay tuned for that. Should be up in about a week or so. Um, for now, we're out of time. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the YouTube description section. Again, link to all of the supplements which I just discussed will be in the comment section with discount code. So if you want to try one of them or a multitude of them, um, feel free to use the discount codes to save yourself some money in the process while shopping online. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. I mean, honestly, all you need is Gorilla Dream, maybe a little bit of glycine and 5-HTP, uh, maybe some growth hormone, you know, here and there, and maybe some Cialis and DHT cream, but that, oh, that was a subject from a different video, right? Um, that was a good topic. I know you guys like that. So if you want to improve sleep quality and nighttime erections, watch this video again, and then watch that other video, and man, you sleep and you wake up rock hard. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.